you need a hobby and keto shouldn't be it. And we would know because we have a keto YouTube channel, but we're gonna talk about that coming up. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and this is my twin sister, Emily, and we've lost over 160 pounds following a ketogenic lifestyle. So you might be thinking that since we have a keto YouTube channel that we spend most of our time thinking about keto and our hobby is keto, but that is actually not the case. Sarah and I have been on and off keto for the last 20 years. This is not our first rodeo. We have lost and gained hundreds hundreds of pounds over the last two decades. And most recently in our last stint of keto that has lasted two and a half years so far, we found the most success when we didn't make keto or cooking our hobby or our interests. I know that a lot of people, they start keto and they want to look up every recipe and collect all the different gadgets and they pour themselves over Pinterest. And what we found over the past 20 years is the more that we obsessed about keto, the more likely we were to fail. I am a recovering food addict. My hobby should have nothing to do with food. I think that's a slippery slope because in my opinion, the more that you think about food, the more you wanna eat it. So in the past, I would um, buy a bunch of keto cookbooks, buy every kind of flour replacement known to man, spending the time to learn how to make the recipe for the keto chicken pot pie from like 15 years ago, only to be extremely disappointed and want to give up keto altogether. It takes an enormous amount of willpower to explore all that there is in the keto world right now and not overindulge constantly. The truth is, is if you replace everything that you used to eat with keto versions of it, we've said this before, you will not lose weight <laughs> because the amount of calories in these foods, while they might be low carb, is even higher than their carb filled counterpart. You need to eat less than you did before in order to lose weight. And you need to even eat less as you lose weight. I've used this example a lot. I need to eat way less than I did when I was 262 pounds. And by that meaning, if I want to continue to lose weight as a person that weighs 165 pounds, I need to eat like someone who is like 150 pounds. And so that is way less than someone who ate themselves up to 262 pounds. I know that sounds confusing, but overall you need to eat so much less than you think you need to. And it's so easy to watch our channel and to watch these other channels where they're creating and discovering these new recipes and you wanna try them all. But we've always said that you need to eat simply whole foods for 70% of the time so that 30% of the time you can indulge in all of these amazing recipes that you see on all these channels and on Pinterest and whatever else. When you're starting a new lifestyle and you're giving up so much and you miss all the things that you were having before, the more that you obsess about keto and being keto, the longer it's going to seem to you, time will go by slower, kind of like interstellar or something. Your perceived time slows down because you're obsessing over what you can't have and you're trying to replace what you can't have with these ketified versions of what you can't have, which takes up most of your time. And that means that it's gonna seem like you've been restricting yourself for so long. You need to get a new hobby so that you can obsess about something else. Stop obsessing about the fact that you're gonna have to restrict yourself. You have to fill your mind with other things that are going to take up that headroom. So like Sarah said, the reason why you should get another hobby outside of cooking and eating and keto is because boredom leads to overeating. You shouldn't be focusing on eating all of the time. In fact, Part of the beauty about keto and intermittent fasting is that it kind of breaks the relationship between food and emotion in a lot of cases. That's why a lot of these foods that mimic all of these carb filled foods, they kind of have the same feeling for me like that I used to get when I would binge on them. And so I never do that with steak and I never do that with vegetables, okay? That's only the sweets and stuff like that. And so if you're constantly making these things in order to trigger some kind of nostalgic reaction, then you're still attached in that way to food, right? You should learn something new because it leads to meeting new people, gaining self-esteem, and filling your mind with other information other than obsessing that you're on keto. It gives you something to look forward to. I think that the point, one of the points that we're trying to make is as recovering food addicts, our hobby and our interests shouldn't revolve around food, just like someone who's a recovering alcoholic shouldn't get into home brewing as a hobby. It's a slippery slope. Yes. So. What happened to us? I mean, back in the past, like we said before, we failed and we failed because we all we would do is obsess about keto and trying all the different keto foods and, and everything like that. In 2019, Sarah um, had something else to occupy her, which is not just a hobby, but she made it her hobby, which was wedding planning. So in 2019, I actually got married and I spent the entire year prior 
planning out my wedding and really helped keep me on track for my wedding day, not only motivated to stay on my diet, but I was looking up different things like my dress or the flowers or the seating arrangement or the invites. Like I had little segments of things that I was working on every week that was different that I could obsess over, scroll through Pinterest. It really filled my mind with other things to think about other than food. Really helped me stay on track for my wedding and keep me motivated because I knew that there was like this thing that I was going to have to be in front of all of these people for the first time in a long time in a dress that I had never worn like really dresses before. So just having an event to really think about deeply every day really helped me stay on track and keep me motivated. And I know that not everyone is getting married right now. So you might not have like a huge event like that to plan, but you could plan like a smaller scaled event, like a barbecue or a birthday party for someone or just even a gathering. Cause like, you know, with what's going on with the panini, people are going to want to start seeing people again. And sometimes it takes one person to actually like start that process and start planning an event. So why not plan something for your friends and your family, an event coming up in the next couple of months or something, and really like obsess over like the details of that event, like the invites and who you're gonna invite and talking to people about what date would work. There's so many different aspects of event planning that I really enjoy during my wedding process. And I think that it can be applied to other things in life other than weddings. It takes somebody to really plan an event, but when everyone comes over, they're all happy that you did. You know? And a lot of people won't be that person to plan it. So why not be, be that, that person. person? And if you're trying to lose weight, having a date to aim for instead of it like being your life, which is always a good thing too, but having a short-term deadline, like I would like to lose 30 or 40 pounds before this event happens so that, you know, people will notice it. It's always more motivating that way for me. Mm -hmm. So use that barbecue or family reunion or birthday party or just a gathering, if you will, um, as a way to keep yourself accountable and keep motivated, but don't focus on the food aspect of it. Have some barbecue, call it a day. Yeah. Can't lose with barbecue. That's true. So at the same time that Sarah was planning for her wedding, I got really into gardening. And I remember when I first got my house, I had never grown anything. In fact, I didn't know the difference between an annual and a perennial like which ones came back year after year. I really didn't ever appreciate flowers at all. In fact, if my husband, my boyfriend at the time or whatever would buy me flowers, I would say, oh, there's such a waste of money. They're, They're gonna, gonna die. die. And I understand it now that like growing flowers and stuff like that is like, it's for you. And because you wanna look at it and you wanna see it. And so I dove right in into first growing vegetables, but then growing flowers, like just dahlias. And we decided that we would try to grow some flowers for Sarah's wedding. And this was not to save money. In fact, Sarah and I spent a lot more money than we would have if we just bought the flowers. But, but there's a lot of intricacies involved with growing cut flowers and me not knowing anything about it. It was just something that I had to like really deep dive into. I would spend days reading about how to, how to water them properly and which which varieties were the rarest and how I got to keep some bugs off of how them. to keep bugs from eating them I found that when I was obsessing about this it really took my mind off of keto and off of losing weight like learning something new to take your mind off of something else it really does make time go by faster. Keto was like not even the thing on my mind most of the time. And so I wasn't even thinking about cheating. And so, cause we were like planning to have these flowers for the yes. wedding. So we were like checking in on we them. We needed to know when to plant them. them. Yeah, we had to plan it all out so that they were gonna bloom during my wedding. And so it took a lot of us like just taking care of them throughout the summer. And it really like helped keep our minds busy. They always say that planting a garden is believing in tomorrow, right? Cause nothing that you do today will be seen. And the same thing is true with, with keto, keto is that day to day, you're not gonna see that much of a change. I know that a lot of you have messaged us saying, oh, I lost six pounds the first week, but now it's been three days and I haven't lost anything. Listen, this is like this what is you lifetime. do today compounds over the next year. And there might be weeks where you lose nothing at all. And you have to occupy your brain with something else. It's that simple. Find something else. I know some of you might be like, eh, I don't like gardening. Then find something else. In fact, we've made a list. There might be some people that don't have room for gardening. We understand that, but you know, something simple as how about some house plants? There's plenty of plants that you can grow inside or under a grow light, herbs and all that kind of stuff. There's something magical about growing something and then eating it. No, <laughs> believe that what you're doing now will pay off at some point. And that's the beauty about this. And it's the beauty about pairing it with your ketogenic lifestyle is that the things that you do now will show up six months later. So that's what you should think about. Some of the other things that I've always wanted to get into, I don't know, pottery. I imagine moving into a big house, like, and having a big thing of land and having a garage. And for some reason, I'm making pottery in this garage. I know, right? It's so random. It's very ghost of you. 
knitting. We suck at that too, but we've we've crocheted, yeah. dabbled in crocheting, but art, you know, painting. There are plenty of beautiful, I could show the one that I did recently. I have no artistic talent, but I made a, um, what is paint it by numbers. A paint by numbers. They are so intricate and they take forever to do. It's like you don't even see that it's happening and then all of a sudden it turns into like a painting. You could always start a YouTube channel. There's so much time spent doing that, honestly. I, mean, um, I think that a lot of people, they have the misconception that since Sarah and I have a keto YouTube channel that our hobby is keto, when in fact that's not true. Our hobby is the YouTube channel. We spend a full-time job each on this YouTube channel and that takes up most of the time. So start a YouTube channel and it doesn't have to be about keto. What about anything that you feel like you could talk about, a um, hundred videos about, you should start a YouTube channel about it because there's other people that are into the things that you're into and you can find your people. And I think that, you know, in the beginning of that journey, it's going to be kind of lonely. You probably won't get a lot of views and stuff like that. Like when we first started, you know, our first, what, eight or eight to 12 videos, we would get like 10 views, if that. And we were really happy about those 10 views. <laughs> Everyone starts from somewhere. Even like the biggest YouTubers started with no viewers. And it's just about, you know, learning as you go, trying to improve and trying to mix up your content. You know, we stopped doing these sit down videos, but a lot of people said that they missed them. So we thought, you know, it's part that we would start integrating integrating them back right. into our strategy because you know you could talk about food all the time but this is more than just a food journey this keto weight loss journey lifestyle it's there's so much more that's mental that a lot of people don't talk about we have had some success lately in comparison to the last you know 20 years and we're trying to share those thoughts with you guys just like in an open forum kind of way just with little different strategies here and there like the hobbies mm -hmm. food was a hobby for me i mean you think about it you obsess about it and we can't do that anymore as people who are recovering food addicts we need to think about anything else something else the point of this is that you know you used to reward yourself with food you used to celebrate with food you used to cry into your food used to just overindulge all the time. You set up this reward system in your head that food equates every kind of emotion that you have. Learn to start retraining your brain to think about anything else, something else, something positive, something that you can look forward to. Like instead of, you know, buying yourself a cake to celebrate, you buy yourself something that has to do with your hobby so that you can create or be creative or do something to enrich yourself through this hobby. You know, Sarah and I got sponsored by Skillshare, and so we, you know, really love it. It's a great, great learning community where you can learn, I don't know, everything that you've ever wanted to, okay? We can leave our link below in case you guys wanna sign up or check it out. But it's like just like one example of find something that you're interested in and obsess over obsess it. over it and don't make it keto. I mean, yeah, watch our channel. <laughs> and try our recipes, but like, but don't make almost all your brain cells think about keto all the time. You need a reprieve, you need a break, and you need to learn how to train your brain differently so that you don't rely on food to make you happy and to comfort you and to keep you from being bored. So these are just a couple of hobbies that we wanted to suggest to you guys, but if you guys have other ones, why don't you let us know in the comment section below. And if you would like to see some of our other videos, you can click on one of the videos on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyways, I'm Emily. And I'm Sarah. And, and we, we are, are the Keto, keto Twins, twins signing, signing out. out.